Hello, pond people. How are you guys doing today? If you're new around here, my name is Ashley and I'm a soil scientist on the channel. I like to take that science and apply it to all things plants. And in today's video, we're going to be looking at how I water organically versus how I water when I'm using conventional. So obviously this applies to either liquid or dissolvable granular fertilizer. So I'm going to be showing you either or if you're not familiar with the premise of this channel, my sole goal of gardening in Canada is to give you the tools to be able to navigate the garden. If that's organic or conventional, I do not care. I just simply want you in the garden. And the reason I say that is because despite popular belief, conventional is not an evil thing and organic may not be all it's cut out to be either. So I firmly believe that the middle ground is probably the truth is somewhere in between conventional and organic. So let's jump over to the flower beds behind me. It is a very hot 30 degree June, beginning of June. No, it's actually still May. It's May 31st when I'm filming this. So it is very hot outside for a zone three. I am quite honestly dying, but I'm doing two different tomato bed experiences. So let's go over and look at that and then we'll look at what products I'm using and how I go about watering. Okay, so behind me here, I have a conventional grown tomato garden. This is my raised bed garden. So it is a closed system. My soil plots are not connected to each other. They're actually on separate pads, meaning that what I do in here will not apply to what I do in the other one behind me here. You notice these pots, I've done a video on that explaining how that is how I reduce transplant shock. So this one here in front of this blue um, bird feeder is my conventional version. I'm using the evil miracle grow on this. I have granular, you can actually see the granules on top of the soil, just all these little white dots. And then I'm going to be using um, liquid fertilizer, the, the blue kind of Kool-Aid looking crystals on that for fertilizing. And then this plot here is going to be my organic. And so on this one, I'm going all out. I'm doing Evolve liquid fertilizer, and then I am doing organic fertilizer. And then I'm also going to be doing humic acid and earth medicine manure so i will show you those products a little bit later but essentially again i got my buckets <laughs> i have a milk carton on this one because i ran out of milk buckets so all in the name of reduction of transplant shock so let's jump over to the greenhouse and look at exactly what i'm going to be using so this is my liquid uh, fertilizer that I'll be using. This is Ketonic here. I will leave a link down below. And then this is Evolve. I will leave a link down below for that as well. Um, Ketonic is an affiliate link and then Evolve is just a link, but there's also a discount code for the Ketonic. So this is humic acid. I don't know if you, I don't know if you've had time to watch the video on that. Be sure to go check that out to see if this is something that you want to add or not. And then this is just a regular old fertilizer. And then for my conventional, I'm using my Miracle Grow, just all purpose. So you could actually use the Bloom formula, which would probably be better um, in the case of tomatoes, anyways. But this all purpose will do just fine, especially in the beginning. And there's one more with the Evolve that I'm using specifically because I'm dealing with transplants and also the fact that I'm dealing with fruits and that is the calcium essential so we will go look at that as well. I apologize for the lack of plant and greenery behind me but the sun is very awkwardly shining straight in my face no matter where I am in my garden right now so you get to see the back of a lovely truck. So here I have all I use to water. I don't even use a watering can yes i'm that bad but i feel like i have more control and i don't hurt my back as much um when i use a bucket so this is an old bucket and the foot pedal is actually busted on it so my little spinner thing doesn't work anymore so i have my bucket and what i do is i will fill this up with just regular tap water when i have access to it i do like to use rain water and specifically slightly warmer rain water um and the reason for that is because I do find slightly better results and I've gone through what the difference between rainwater and um, chlorinated or tap water is in another video, but I can do another video on that for you guys if you like. Now, 
I simply fill this bucket and I will leave it roast in the sun for a few hours just to get it sun warm, I guess you could say. And I do also find that that makes a big difference. And then all I do is I will take a yogurt container or just a cup, an old cup, and then I will actually physically scoop it out and then water it on the plant. So I'll show you that action later. So inside of my back bucket for organic, I'm going to be using my humic acid here. So this is 10 milliliters per liter of water. So I will put that accordingly into my bucket of water. And then we've talked about humic acid and how it actually helps with chelation or chelate or chelates of the um, soil and the micronutrients or macronutrients in there. So I will mix that with my liquid all purpose. So this stuff here, which is dripping on me, and then I'm going to use my organic calcium essentials. So my organic calcium essentials, if you're using a ground soil and you're in North America, it's very unlikely that your soil is lacking in calcium. But what I like about this dirt and grow is the fact that it has quite a bit of phosphorus in it. And phosphorus is very, very good at helping lessen the um, transplant truck that can come with transplanting outdoors. So if you're having calcium deficiency issues, it's probably not your soil, it's most likely your pH, but using something like this in a foliar spray, for example, will help in the meantime till you can get your pH adjusted into the scope that you need it in. So these three products are gonna go into the bucket um, that is going to be filled with sun warmed water. And then I'm simply just going to water my plants. And then for my miracle grow, I'm using just the granular stuff and I will mix that again according to the instructions inside of here. So fun fact, miracle grow you can and will burn your plants if you over fertilize. The nice thing about the miracle grow brand is they don't give you um, the max results. So they don't suggest the absolute max that you should have everything at. They actually try to pull back on the quantity that they require in hopes that you won't burn your plants. So as long as you're following the instructions, you should have no burn. If you overdo it with the Dirt and Grow Evolve fertilizers, you're good. You're not gonna burn your plants. Same with the Ketonic, you are not gonna burn your plants. So you'll be just fine. Okay, so got my bucket here full of not sun warm water. It's actually pretty cold. That's okay. Timing for YouTube. And I'm just gonna throw my Ketonic here. Um, it smells, <laughs> see you know what it smells like? It's funny because it comes from a bog. So obviously it smells like a bog but it reminds me of the lake, like lake water in Saskatchewan, especially Southern Saskatchewan. Anyone from this area is gonna know exactly what I'm talking about. Um, so yeah, or a dugout, a good old dugout. I'm actually just gonna give this a shake. Um, whatever you, you're using, like a do not drink this, you won't get some humic acid in your bodies. She's like, yeah, dude. Um, whatever you're using in organic uh, fertilizer, especially liquid, you wanna make sure that you shake it because stuff will settle out. It uh, doesn't have the chemicals in it that a inorganic or conventional fertilizer would have to help keep things suspended. Um, so it's relying on you to give it some mechanical manipulation. And so Dirt and Grow is five milliliters per 1.5 liters of water, which I don't know, it was like three catfuls-ish. I probably put way too much in there, but that's okay. Um, and then I'm going to put in my calcium essentials. Oh goodness. And this is gonna be way better than eggshells, you guys. Way freaking better. So let's jump over while the sun's decided to disappear to the organic tomato plot. You guys will have to let me know in the comments down below if you appreciate this kind of walk through gardening with me style videos. I know they're not my typical sit down and go through the science videos, but it's more of the applied science or the theory applied to practice. So again, let me know in the comments down below if you enjoy this or if you're like, no, go back to the old way. So here I am, or obviously a combination of the two, but anyways, here I am in front of my organic tomato pot plant area. And one of the things you're probably noticing right off the bat is, wait, your soil's wet. Did you already water? 
and I did. So this is not theoretical or factual or studied, but it is my brain working in overdrive the way it always does. So what I do for fertilizing or before I fertilize is I will wet my soil. And the reason for this is because if I apply in my mind, again, this is not proven scientific fact or anything. This is just what I do. So in my mind, when I have fertilizer in the upper portions of my soil profile and I water, as I water more, or if I have to do like an overall good soaking because it's been too hot or I just wanna make sure the, the profile's thoroughly saturated, what I do to all my mobile nutrients, such as nitrogen, I force it down into the profile because it's going to go with the water because it's water soluble. So it's gonna go with gravity and I'm just gonna push it out of the realm of the roots. Especially when I have little BB plants, like right now, that are just freshly transplanted. My roots are nowhere else other than that first little bit. So I personally will water prior to fertilizing. So I watered thoroughly, heavily, nice and deep, because this is my only second day of transplanting. And when I first initially transplant, I really wanna um, increase that water so that I can reduce my transplant shock. I took my bucket off just to show you, but if I had, you can see it up here. So if I had my bucket still on top of my recently transplanted tomatoes, I would actually just water into the bucket itself. And then I'm just gonna take my little cup here. It's about the size of a yogurt container and i'm just going to water just at the base of the plant let it soak in a little bit and then continue to water but the thing to keep in mind is i'm not pouring it all up against the stem i'm not pouring it out here i'm pouring it within my rhizosphere <laughs> which is a fancy word for i'm i'm pouring it where the roots are so um, i'm just going to pour this in here if you are an area where you can control your water inputs, then you could probably dig a little trench or make a little ditch here for your water, your fertilizer to sit in. But if you don't, then just water the way you can. So I'm just gonna finish this up and then we're going to jump into the inorganic stuff. Okay, so I'm back in the shade with the very evil miracle Grow here. Um, so I'm using just the all-purpose formula. This is like the stuff with a ton of nitrogen in it. And this is okay for now. I heavily encourage if you were doing fruiting vegetables or um, just any sort of fruit or produce producing vegetable that you get the all-purpose bloom formula the reason being it has less nitrogen more phosphorus and potassium along with some other macronutrients that are needed for plants such as calcium etc and so forth so this is a bit high in nitrogen this i would use for flowers or for foliage type decorative baskets that would be my go-to for that but for right now in the beginning of the season given how much i have left in this container it will do just fine for right now i'll probably switch over sometime in july so this is a packet from last year and this is not uncommon to see if any sort of water has gotten into your package a good question uh, is whether or not you can use it so you can use it but i heavily recommend not using it the reason for that is because the salts have separated from um, your nitrogen and your phos and your potassium and you don't know what you're getting in each scoop so you could end up with a scoop that has a lot of salt and not a lot of nutrients in it and if you end up with that scoop you will end up killing or harming your plants you'll end up with fertilizer burn so if you have destroyed a packet it is garbage um, unless you are very very talented and you're able to somehow see molecular chemicals inside of a container so that one is toast now this one is totally sealed up and find am i right candy cane so this is just okay so you can use this um it's it's a nice bright purple or pink blue jeez so there is no directions on the package because this is used for the ones you attach to your garden hose and this is where i get in trouble 
as a YouTuber because, and as someone who just is intuitively okay with fertilizer, this is where I get in trouble because I don't know how much to tell you to put in. So don't buy this because it's meant for those refill packets and just pretend that I'm not going to dump in however much I want to dump in. Um, yeah, it depends on the plants that you're dealing with. I'm dealing with tomatoes. I'm gonna say there is in this container currently a quarter of a cup ish and I'm gonna fill her up to the brim so quarter of a cup remember underdo it don't overdo it so if you guys don't know why I'm using liquid over granular a really good place to start is my liquid versus granular video that kind of goes through the details as to what the difference is when it comes to the store stuffs now, I do use them in conjunction with each other um, so this one has granular manure which would be earth fertilizer or earth medicine and then this one over here has the miracle grow all-purpose slow release so there is granular in there but i do supplement with a liquid or a dissolvable dissolvable granular fertilizer um and that's just because that's how i work Okay, just kidding this isn't blue enough this isn't the blue i want i want it bluer okay so we're over here at the conventional uh tomato plot and same thing i just literally hand water all these with my little blue kool-aid and if it's in the bucket that's how i water it in the bucket and yeah that's quite honestly it and again i pre-wet this for the exact same reasons i pre-wet the organic one so i am complete officially over in the tomato batch i'm going to obviously finish the rest of my garden and the rest of my garden i'm actually going to do with a combination of both organic and conventional so i actually mix the two together and i know that sounds crazy but that's how i roll i truly do believe that the answer is somewhere in between now i don't have any studies to back up this claim and there aren't many studies out there that aren't for one or against another they usually have some sort of agenda behind them unfortunately the scientific community has turned in that direction but i do think that the answer is somewhere in between when it comes to conventional versus organic fertilizers the most important thing to remember when you are gardening whether it is floral or it is edible fruits and vegetables you need to do what you're comfortable with and you need to do what helps you succeed so if you find something like conventional fertilizer working like you may over fertilize then do not use them if you feel that organic isn't giving you enough kick then again don't use it you need to do what you're comfortable with and i can go into more detail about organic versus conventional and kind of the reason why i think it's the answer is in somewhere between but i'm not going to get into that to the, in this video because it's already a little bit too long but i hope you enjoyed this video let me know in the comments down below what you like to use is it conventional or is it organic or is it like me a con combination of the two so i would love to hear and actually you guys i've gotten quite a few comments on my other videos someone wasn't able to get the comment section to work and they were upset because they said that they rely on both the video and then the commentary specific to your guys's experience gardening so that's really really cool that we've built up a community of people that don't just rely on me but actually rely on your commenting and your experience and sharing your issues and your successes that is unbelievable and exactly where i want to be with this so i want to thank you guys for watching if you enjoyed the video be sure to give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button kane is here to say hello i will talk to you guys later bye